How does snow fucking work? Uh, why isn't it just ice? Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, we're building a pretty, I would say interesting, little gaming PC inside of this. Yes, believe it or not, this tiny box is actually a computer case. Some of you may know that I've already built a gaming PC that was actually meant for gaming. It had a 1660 Super, so just doing another one wouldn't be that interesting. I'm going to be using CPU integrated graphics to build a tiny and efficient gaming PC. I'm going to be using CPU integrated graphics. I know what you're thinking. How am I possibly going to build a gaming PC with integrated graphics? It's not going to be the best PC on the planet because the reason I'm building this PC is because one of my friends needs something for work. They just need to do some basic typing and stuff because their laptop is currently broken. So they just need to borrow something to get some work done in the meantime until their laptop is fixed. Big problem is that currently, at the time of filming this video, February of 2021, it is nearly impossible to get new CPUs and new graphics cards. And as you can see by the motherboard box, in today's video we're using the Gigabyte Z97N Gaming 5. This is a tiny little powerhouse with the Z97 chipset because that is the best chipset that supports one of my favorite all-time Intel CPUs. This is the Intel Core i7-5775C, the first CPU on 14 nanometer. Many people think Skylake was the first, but no, it was Broadwell. Unlike most mainstream Intel chips that use Intel UHD integrated graphics, which are mediocre at best and really can't get much done, this CPU has Intel's Iris Pro 6200 series graphics. Even though this CPU is actually relatively old, it still has better graphics than most modern Intel CPUs. Not to mention this CPU also has 128 megabytes of ED RAM. So I've been doing a lot of Ryzen builds recently, so I haven't really installed an Intel CPU in a while. So I'm just gonna do that simply. I'm not gonna do any overhead or anything. Put that in, close that. And just like that, our CPU is installed. It's again, super easy to install CPUs, even older ones. I need RAM. There we go. Yeah, this RAM is really nothing special, as you can see, because it is actually DDR3. This was the last Intel chipset, Z97, that solely supported DDR3. There is no DDR4 support for the CPU or this chipset. So, we have 16 gigs of DDR3, which is, again, plenty for what this is going to be used for, which is simple work. But I thought, hey, why not try gaming on it? Easy. Next thing, we need a cooler. So, we're just using this really basic Noctua cooler. This is an L9i. Now this has a really interesting mounting system. Oh, I almost forgot thermal paste. Arctic MX4. That, this was a, that was a dumb way to put on thermal paste. Do not show what I just did. Nope. That was, I, I am used to threader per, I am not. Ah, that was bad. Should probably just put it on like that. All right, so, yep, easy cooling, easy mounting. I'm insane. Cable management at its finest. And uh, our cooler's installed, and our entire motherboard is done. We can actually install this in our case now. It's so cute, look at it. I, I know, I, uh, yeah, where? So the one thing is that this does install in our case upside down um, because the PCI riser uh, comes out at the top and goes behind so that the card and Motherboard are next to each other like this. IO shield already installed. So uh, it's a little bit weird mounting, but it should be absolutely fine. It's actually a really fully featured motherboard. It's got all 7.1 audio, E SATA, <laughs> E SATA, no grid, E SATA, the NZXT, Trident ZRGB, and then we have uh, Ethernet as well. I did a, a fuck up. I either broke that or fixed it. So, our motherboard is installed. It's kind of weird how it like floats in the case, but that's not going to be for long. Let's get our power supply. This is what's known as a Flex ATX power supply at about one U in height, one server unit in height, and 
well, this much in width, however much that is, these PSUs are actually really small. But it doesn't mean they can't be powerful because this is the Silverstone FX 500. This is a 500 watt 80 plus gold Flex ATX PSU. Silverstone actually sent it to me to use in this case. I've used it in a build before. I did a review of it. This thing is awesome. Of course, I will leave Amazon and store page links to all of the products that I use in this video below that are relatively recent. All right, so after some cable uh, management, we ended up with this. It's in the case. Airflow's not restricted. The side panel will fit on, so I'm completely fine with that. I did mention before that we're using integrated graphics in this build. Despite having a PCIe slot that's already routed and we could easily use a pretty high power graphics card as long as it fits in here. The reason we're not using a graphics card in today's build is because the person who will be using this build has given me the SSD from their laptop so that it has all their files on it and stuff like that. This way they can actually just get right back to work using this PC until their laptop is back. But the only problem is that I'm using an older chipset because it's really the only ITX board I have available right now. And Z97 is not famously known for having M.2 slots. That's more Z170 and on that had M.2 slots, NVMe SSD support on the board, booting from PCIe, all that kind of stuff. What I have found is that this board does support booting from PCIe despite not having an M.2 slot. But how do I do that? Well, with one of these. This is an M.2 to PCI Express 4X adapter. Underneath this heatsink is a one terabyte NVMe SSD, just adapted to a normal PCI Express 4X slot. So we can actually just slot that right there. And that's the storage for our system. Let's get this thing booted up and tested. All right, guys, let's turn on our power supply and our front button is right here. We got fan spin. And it's stopped. I hate it that it does that. This Noctua cooler, Noctua fans in general, I don't know why they do this, but on boot, for some reason, they just stop spinning and then we'll start up again. That annoys me. I hate Noctua fans that they do that. Like, this fan should not be just turning off. Oh, wait, it just started spinning up again. Fucking hell. It's, it's RAM. I don't know what is wrong with my RAM. Aww. I've been troubleshooting this for like an hour. Okay. <laughs> you know, so this CPU came out in 2015. This game, GTA 5, came out in 2013. This is on minimum settings 1080p, and I do mean minimum settings 1080p. It's getting 20 FPS. Now, I tested about five minutes ago just to make sure it was working, and it was at like 30 in the same area. I'm a little confused, but our CPU is only boosting to like 2.4 gigahertz, which shows that our GPU is extremely bottlenecked in our system. Yeah, we're getting about 20 FPS right now, according to MSI Afterburner. Yikes. I mean, hey, it's still slightly playable, it just looks like potato. I mean, you can still commit crimes. This should be... Oh, I'm playing for like 100 FPS, I don't know what it was now. Here we go. Why is it this? Alright, there we go. Now, this is more of our CPU's speed, and uh... You know, we're not on 100% usage, this is 1080p. Again, minimum settings, just because. Now, this is actually running relatively fine. This is, uh, you know, we have pretty low frame time, 14 to 15 milliseconds. And uh, about 70 FPS, using about 90 to 100% CPU. The problem is that the input delay on this TV is just so bad, but it is just a nice big display, because there's no way I can record this game for on this rig. You know, I'm gonna be honest, I kind of expect a little bit more from these integrated graphics. Because they are the Iris Pro, so they should be, well, Pro. But, <laughs> I don't know, I've just been... I've been bamboozled. All 
Alright, so, <laughs> I was actually surprised in a bad way. I, again, I didn't expect much, but I expected a slight bit more from these new good graphics. Call of Duty Round 5, this is a really old game, DirectX 9. Yeah, if I played like CSGO, it would probably run okay too, but I don't have many games on this drive because it's not my drive, it's my friends who was using my Steam account just to play some games. Um, but, I don't know. I'm going to retest again when I get back to where I have like my good monitor that isn't, you know, a giant TV that has really terrible input lag. Like, I want to make sure um, that I have my benchmarks right for this, but that's not the point. We just kind of enjoyed this little build. I thought it would just be a fun thing to do because I'm building this PC anyway just to do a quick recording. I do love using this case and this power supply. That's really it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed it. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.